What's up guys, Overdog here. In this video, we're gonna be exploring the testnet activities on Tapioca DAO. As always, all links gonna be in the description, but follow them at your own risk. Now, right away for the people who only care about getting some benefits from this project, I have a good news and I have bad news. Good news is that officially in tokenomics, 2.5% of the token supply is allocated to the airdrop. Obviously, we don't know how it's gonna be distributed. And also the bad news is that in terms of testnet, we're kinda late because the testnet activity started in March. So we're like three months late and some stuff is not gonna be available to us. But in my opinion, better late than never. So Tapioca DAO is an omni-chain lending and borrowing protocol and it's built on layer zero technology. And the main reason I'm kinda late for this testnet, this project was sort of flying under the radar up until recently when they acquired a seed funding round of 6 million and it started getting a lot of traction. Now let's dive into actual activities of the testnet. Since it's an omni-chain, we're gonna be using four testnet chains. These are gonna be Arbitrum Girly, Avalanche Fuji, Polygon Mumbai, and Phantom Testnet. So if you don't have these, go to chain list, click Include testnets here and just type in search the names and add them to a MetaMask. For example, if you need Arbitrum, you can type in Arbitrum and you get Arbitrum Girly. And let's go ahead and add that to a MetaMask. If you need Phantom, you type in Phantom and we have to Phantom testnet. And same obviously goes uh, for the Mumbai and the Fuji. Next, we also need to have some testnet tokens there on every chain to cover the gas. There are links here Let's actually try to claim. This is the faucet for Avalanche Fuji. Supposed to give two AVAX. I haven't used this one for a while, so I'm not sure how this works. Looks fine. Then we got Polygon Mumbai faucet. It takes us to the Alchemy faucet, which I consider to be the best Mumbai faucet because the native faucet will only give you testnet tokens if you don't have any, pretty much, or have a very, very small amount. Then we got Phantom Testnet. Okay, five testnets successfully sent, and the most problematic here is gonna be Arbitrum Girly, because if you go to this faucet that they are suggesting, you can see it only drips 0.001 ETH that I suppose not going to be enough for our tasks. So here I would actually suggest to bridge some amount from Girly to Arbitrum Girly. You can use any bridge that you want. I recommend using Pheasant. Here we select Testnet. And we go Girly to Arbitrum Girly. The only drawback of this bridge is that one transaction is limited to 0.1 ETH, but 0.1 ETH should be enough. And around five minutes later, I got my tokens on Arbitrum testnet. So what is next here? This guide says that we need to mint some tokens and it's only available once every 24 hours. So let's just do some of that. It auto fills the amount also. I'm gonna be using aggressive gas, but it's up to you as always. Okay. Okay, around 50 minutes later, I'm back and I stumbled upon several limitations here. Let me explain first and then I'll show you what I can. So first of all, what you can do, you can go ahead and mint these tokens once every 24 hours. So there are two types of tokens on four chains. One type is for minting USDO and USDO is the stable coin that is used here in order to lend. So Mint is the first way to get USDO and the second way to get USDO is the borrow. Now we're gonna try to do the Mint and here actually I already tried with three other chains. The problem is gas is absolutely insane, absolutely insane. So on Girly, well first of all let me uh, talk about this one. Here and in borrow there is not a set amount that you get for a specific amount of medic, for example. You can play with the amount of USD or you want to mint or borrow, but it increases or lowers your risk. So for example, let's just do 100. At this point, I'm curious mainly uh, about the gas here. 
So first you will need to sign several signature requests. And if you are on Arbitrum, you will stay on Arbitrum. If you are on other chains, you will need to sign two transactions on chain. Then it will suggest to switch the chain to Arbitrum girly. And then you will need to sign another two transactions on Arbitrum. Then it's gonna switch to the original chain and we'll see if this will work. No, it also doesn't work. So at this point, I've already tried all four chains here in order to be able to mint this USDO. And only on Arbitrum that actually worked for me. However, I will show you now. I moved a whole bunch of girly ETH from girly to Arbitrum. I will try to mint now and show you the gas. So this is the gas, as you can see currently. This is on market, 0.27 ETH. As you can see, we borrowed USDO. Also, what's the contract of this USDO? I think what the functionality is missing is to easily add USDO to MetaMask. Yeah, maybe I'm blind and I just don't see it. I'll just do it from the Explorer. Go on to activity. Wait, is this a transaction? And the explorer is not working for me either currently, so I cannot add this from transaction there, but that's fine, let's move on. And again, all other chains are currently not working for me. I don't know what's the issue there. So I would actually suggest you to wait until they start functioning or the gas on Arbitrum comes down. Otherwise you will need to move in terms of girly. We'll see how much I will spend in total. Now, in order to use the borrow functions for USDO, we need to use different tokens. These are LPM tokens. So if we use that on Arbitrum, uh, we need to use this one GLPM. I already minted that in the testnet. It has the same system where you select how much you want to borrow. Again, we signing. As you can see, when you're doing that on Arbitrum, you only sign in three requests and on other chains you sign in four and two of these are on Arbitrum. So here estimated gas is a bit lower, but still crazy. Weirdly it shows that transaction is completed way earlier than it actually completes. Okay, Explorer finally loaded the first transaction. This should be the correct contract address for the USDO. Okay, while it loads, we can go ahead and use the land function. Land USDO in isolated collateral markets to earn from borrowers and omnichain yield strategies. Okay, the RB scan finally loaded the page. This should be the contract address for the USDO. And we can import that into the MetaMask. Okay, 600 USDO. So yeah, that's the correct address. And so we can go ahead and land it. And what are we getting? Again, this token, GLPM. Need to sign two times. So a bit lower gas here, but still like 0.12. Crazy amount. Yeah, see, like the difference between this confirmation and confirmation in MetaMask is like between 10 to 20 seconds. Okay, we can close that. My positions, we can see our positions. So we used these three functions and now we can go ahead and try to teleport. What this is, we're basically moving tokens Okay, I'll just try to move some USDOs from Arbitrum to, let's say, Mumbai. Let's do Mumbai. Teleport. Uh-huh. Let's do wrapped ETH. We're gonna move wrapped ETH from Arbitrum to Polygon. Will that work? Huh, this works. So, it seems to me that currently the problem is in USDO on other chains. So everything that involves USDO outside of Arbitrum just doesn't work. You can't mint it, you can't borrow it, 
and you can't teleport it. You can teleport as you can see other tokens, but you cannot teleport USDR. Okay, for this transaction, it took around 40 seconds to complete. And that would be all the functionality currently available here. Again, I would suggest to wait a little bit. We are currently in the third phase of the testnet, which just launched very recently. And I think there is plenty of time to get this stuff done. I would suggest actually doing a lot more testing, a lot more transactions, like different chains, different operations. Once other chains become functional with the USDO token. And also, I don't know what's happening with the Arbitrum gas. So hopefully that will slow down as well, because it's kind of ridiculous to pay how much did we pay close to one ETH for like four transactions. So this would be the on chain part. What about other stuff? Let me move the camera. So first of all, there is a feedback button and there are links for providing the feedback. Then we got roles and guild XYZ. And first of all, I would suggest to read about roles in the discord in the channel Guild roles FAQ. Couple of roles, very easy to get. The first one is peerlers. You just need to follow the Twitter and add this uh, string to your Twitter bio and you should be done. The second role that should be somewhat easily acquirable in the future is the redoer. For that you just need to mint uh, any article from here. But there are only four articles and they've been minted out. So currently as far as I understand, again, you cannot mean that. There is a role for having the NFT, but these NFTs are crazy expensive now. They're currently sitting at 0.9 ETH. Then you got OG roll, Tepi Okun's role. These are locked and should not be obtainable any longer. Also the same for Sushi Friends. Also the same for Oysters. So that is regarding Guild XYZ. And there is also a channel where you can uh, ask your questions. I believe it's every Tuesday they're holding the tap talks. And from every tap talk you can acquire the OAT on Galaxy. It's similar to like if you're familiar with the structure of Galaxy Radio where you come into the channel. Bot will record your presence and all the people who were present can mint this OAT for free. Same kind of goes here. So I would suggest also if you can join and listen in. First of all, you will familiarize yourself with the protocol more. And secondly, you will get this OAT. And again, more information about that is on the Discord. So that's all I wanted to cover here. Thank you very much for watching. Be sure to leave your comments and questions down below. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.